Errol Hawani sent out a tweet and he said the UFC should do everything in its power to book Francis Ngannou versus John Jones next, comma, yes, that's right, next. What the hell's Ariel talking about? That's interesting to me. I wonder where that came from. So I think about it a little bit. Ariel goes on to explain himself, and he just talks about precedence. First off, if you book that fight next, how do you explain the interim championship? And Ariel goes, well, there's actually a precedence. And I think he used Bisping as an example. It's like Whitaker or somebody had the belt, but they brought in Bisping anyway. I don't know that that makes it better, by the way. I don't know if there's some weird time in history and you go, well, it's already been weird once and it was seven years ago and therefore we could be weird again because that would be weird for me. One thing that I took away from Surreal versus Derek and one thing that I went into this as a fan appreciating was that we're finally going to have clarity in the heavyweight division. Thank goodness, like that belt is going to mean a lot to Surreal, to his family, to his coaches, but to the rest of us, the fan, we finally got a number one contender. We finally know somewhere this division's going to go. So if you took that away, and you most certainly could, I'm just sharing with you. I don't know that Errol's right. What Errol was talking about is that you play the John Jones card because that works and that's going to work right now. So then you, you have to be left with and juxtapose a simple question. And I'll ask it to you guys. Francis Ngannou versus Surreal Gone or Francis Ngannou versus John Jones. Which one do you want to see more? Probably a hard question, right? I'm asking myself that. Man, I'm in. You got me either way. I'm in. You have to understand. They're very different characters, and they don't all work interchangeably. The matchmaking and how it's going to happen is a very big deal. Even if you were to back up to a fight that could have happened, but do you want to see Francis Ngannou versus John Jones, or do you want to see John Jones versus Derek Lewis? And it's two very different matchups, two very different anticipations. John Jones versus Surreal Gone any time prior to a week ago doesn't work. We didn't know who Surreal was. We didn't know that Surreal was this good. The fact that Surreal had never been taken down, we didn't put in the plus column. We held that against him. This guy's barely done it. He's got so little experience. Matter of fact, he's never even been on bottom. Now that we're seeing a little more, we're going, man, this son of a bitch can't even take him down. But it's a different perception. And you do have to make sure that you understand this. The John Jones experiment at heavyweight only works in one way, which is that John gets his ass kicked. If you put John into a fight that you believe John is going to win, we haven't changed things. It's why John left 205 pounds. He was great at what he did, but he was having the Roy Jones Jr. effect. Roy Jones, as great as he was, and he was for a whole decade, couldn't sell any tickets. He couldn't make any money. He was so good that there was just no curiosity in the viewer's mind where they could suspend reality far enough to accept that Roy might get beat tonight. And that's what happened to John, right? Very unfair. He became a victim of his own success, but I'm just reminding you why he left 205 pounds. As hard as those fights were with Dominic Reyes or with Santos for the first time with Gustafson, nobody knew or expected prior to the fight that they were going to be hard. Thought John was just going to walk over him. So that perception being the reality was not good for sales. So John leaves the division to go to heavyweight. Great, but a piece that John was missing. John is very out of touch with his own career. The piece that John needs to go make that money is he needs to be the underdog. If we believe he's going to win, we've already seen that. We've seen that since he was 23 years old when he became the youngest champion in history. Aside from his loss to Matt Hamill, it's been perfect. So we've already seen that. How many of you really like a movie? You love it. It's your favorite movie. You paid $10 to see it. You want to see it again? Are you going to pay me another $10? Maybe. Maybe. Will you do it a third time? Same price. Still got to pay me 10 bucks. Would you do it a fourth and a fifth and a set? Right? Eventually, you're going to... No. No. I, I want to see another picture now. It's really important that you understand that when you're inserting John Jones into the heavyweight class and you're going to get the captivation and imagination of the masses, which transfers to business, which equals the dollars that John is very clearly after, you have to have the piece that he is the underdog. John would be the underdog against Francis. That's why that was so compelling. That's why that jumped off the page the night that Francis beat Stipe. Wow. Stopped all the takedowns. Stop the greatest of all time. Bring in John Jones. Never been in the weight class, and Francis is going to have all this size on him. 
Whether that played out to be the story or not, it's what it would have been. And for the first time ever, John would have gone into a contest as the underdog. It's very relevant. So John versus Francis right now, it still works. Ariel's not wrong. But John versus Surreal, I would argue for you. I don't know how bullishly I would argue this. I think John versus Surreal is the bigger fight. I think a lot of that has to do with the surprise factor that it's new. That might wear off over the course of two or three months and we're back arguing. I think for right now, tonight, I think that Surreal's bigger, but I don't know that I agree with Ariel that you want to insert John and exclude either Surreal or Francis because the winner of Surreal or Francis is going to be catapulted, which is where if you bring in John, John's not only an underdog now, he's going to be a massive underdog, but the bigger the spread, at the window, the bigger the spread of the odd makers against Jones is what's going to bring in the business. That's what's going to get John what he wants, which is a big paycheck. I, I, I feel as though that might be being missed by people who are talking about John at heavyweight doesn't work. John versus Curtis Blades doesn't. It's fine. Go ahead. John versus Derek. It's fine. It's fine. We'll stop. We'll watch it. Go ahead. John versus Stipe. Well, now you got pretty damn interesting. But it's not a skill issue. It's a perception issue. And if you want to know, if you want to have a great parameter for how well is business going to be this night, it's going to be directly tied to what are the odds against John Jones? What's the chance I'm going to see something, a movie that I've never seen before, an ending that I've never heard before? I think that it's important that you keep some kind of integrity intact with the interim belt. I'm one of the few guys that likes the interim belt, though. A lot of people have a problem with it. I think it's opportunity. I think that that storyline never gets old. I think you walk a champ against a champ. I just say all the marbles. You're playing poker. You are all in. I like it. I like that there's opportunity. I like that things don't get held up. I like that the boys in the back still have something to strive towards and work towards. I don't care you want to put a, a few letters in front of it, interim. I don't care what you want to put, BMF. I don't care what you put there. If it ends in champion, that was a champion. That's awesome. 